Have you made eclipse cards before? I've got one technique, four ways. Let's get crafting. Okay, I'm gonna start with the basic eclipse card and I'm gonna create my own background and I'm just using some stamps. And I'm, these are both woodware stamps. I'm gonna be using the mini floral wonder and the mini wings marsh fritillary uh, stamp. You could use a background stamp here. You could use a single stamp if you've got one large enough, but not quite a background. You could definitely leave some white space. But here I wanted to create a background with two stamps, seemingly random. And I'm just gonna go ahead and I use my anti-static powder, powder bag, so yay me. And I'm just gonna go ahead and place my stamps down and stamp them out in Versafine Onyx Black Ink. Now, if you've decided to create your own background, you want to try to stamp off your page as well. That way it gives more of a presentation of like a piece of wallpaper or gift wrap rather than deliberate stamping within the four walls of your cardstock. So I highly recommend a stamping platform for this particular part of the technique. Of course, if you just have acrylic blocks, make it work. It'll be fine, um, but if you wanna get that second stamp in the exact same place, a stamping platform is the way to go. I also used Michael's brand Recollection 65 pound weight cardstock. In retrospect, I should have used watercolor cardstock, but I was thinking I was gonna leave this a black and white image at the beginning and then, well, I changed my mind. So I am gonna watercolor this, super simple watercolor. Um, but before I can get to that stage, I'm going to go ahead and use my Ranger Superfine Clear Embossing Powder. As you can see, I don't use anything fancy for capturing my remaining embossing powder. It's just an old piece of copy paper and I fold it in half to create a nice edge and then it goes right back into the pot. And yes, I make sure that I seal that pot right away because I've been known to dump it. Anywho. I am using a WOW heat gun to heat emboss my image, and then we're gonna go back to stamping. Now, of course, it's possible that your cardstock will warp a little bit. This is super lightweight cardstock. Just bend it. Card has no memory. You can bend it back into place. And then I'm going to reposition my floral and my butterfly stamps and do the exact same process a second time. Now, once I thought I had my cardstock lined up and uh, ready to go, I realized that my card was just not behaving the way I wanted to. So I tacked it down with a little bit of mint tape and repositioned my stamps. Since I have handled my cardstock again, you want to make sure you go back over it with your anti-static powder bag, stamp down your image, and if requiring it, a second time. You'll notice that I stick a piece of copy paper underneath my cardstock, and that's because I didn't like the black ink getting on my mouse pad for my stamparatus. So it doesn't really take up any space, and it works just fine to keep that mouse pad clean. Okay, we are gonna keep this sped up so that we can get through this initial part of our Eclipse card. You'll notice that when I'm heat embossing, I am holding my cardstock up off of my glass surface. The reason for that is to allow the heat from the heat gun to go through my cardstock, which will in turn heat up the embossing powder faster and potentially you'll have less warpage of your cardstock. If you leave it flat on your surface, um, it kind of, the heat stays on the top and it takes a little bit longer for that um, powder to melt. Hey y'all, I'm Wendy from Village Card and Craft and I can't thank you enough for choosing to spend your time with me today. If you're finding value from my videos or you like what you're hearing, please consider giving me a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. We'd love to have you be a part of the Village Card and Craft community.
I'm going to go ahead and watercolor my flowers. I'm using Distress Oxides and I'm going to do this in Tumbled Glass for my light color and Uncharted Mariner for my dark color. I'm just smushing both of those ink pads onto an acrylic block. If you want more vibrant colors, go with Reanchors. Um, but I kind of wanted a more pastel card for this particular one. I am going to add a little bit of water to my acrylic block. I did not spray my uh, cardstock down. Once again, if I had used watercolor cardstock, I probably would have just to get those inks moving a little bit more. But I knew that I didn't have the resiliency of cardstock that was meant for watercolor here. So I'm just going with something light and um, distilled water. Florida notoriously does not have very good drinking water and it tends to have an odor about it. It's perfectly okay to drink, but I don't like to let it sit in a bottle. It tends to develop a, I don't know, a yuck smell. I just don't like it. So by using distilled water, I keep that smell away and uh, all is well. But if you live in a place where you've got great tap water, no need to do distilled water. I am covering my florals with the light tumbled glass and then I'm going to emphasize the centers and wherever the lines are in my flower with the uncharted mariner. Understand here that I am literally slapping color onto this background. Um, it doesn't really matter if it stays in the lines or not. By heat embossing it tends to keep the watercolor inside the lines but if you don't want to heat emboss and you've got an ink that isn't going to smear, you don't need to do that step. You can certainly just slap on color and sometimes going outside the lines is kind of cool too. Uh, but I've chosen a light and a dark color. Uh, you'll see uh, a light and a dark green and a light and a dark orange as well. But you do you. If you want to do it all in one color, that's fine too. Moving on to my leaves, I am using Shabby Shutters and Mode Lawn, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. I have sprayed it down with a little bit of water onto my acrylic block, and I am starting with my lighter color. I'm going to fill in all the leaves, and then I'm going to accent it along the lines of the stamp with the darker color. Have you checked us out over on Facebook at Village Garden Crafts yet? If not, please do. We'd love to have you join us over there. We have a small group of crafty-minded people who just love to share their ideas. We'd love to see yours too. And to finish up my background, I'm using Spiced Marmalade and Dried Marigold. And I'm going to color in the entire butterfly with the lighter color except for the body and I kept thinking to myself while I was doing this uh, do I really want to dig through all my stuff to get the black soot for the body of the butterfly and well I didn't so <laughs> um, I just looked at what I had on my workspace already and the uncharted mariner was a dark color so that's what I'm going to use for my butterfly bodies it doesn't have to be realistic just go with what you got Now, I promised you four different cards for the Eclipse method. So the first one that I'm sharing with you is what we call the standard Eclipse. I'm going to make some part raised. So we're going to do that today with alphabet dies. But you can use anything that you have. If you don't have alphabet dies and you want to elevate a portion, say a shape, you can certainly do that as well. Really, the sky's the limit here. The key is you want to raise some part of your card. So let's get back to the card. Now I'm going to be using a Memento alphabet. This is a one and a half inch alphabet to spell out the word B-Day. Obviously, I don't have enough card space for birthday, so I'm abbreviating it. And I'm using my glass mat to keep my letters straight. Once my letters are in a correct position, I'm using a long piece of mint tape to go ahead and adhere all four letters together and pick them up at once so that I can apply them to my background. And then I'm gonna go ahead and die cut that out of my background. Make sure that you keep all of your pieces, including the centers of any letters. 
Now go ahead and gently remove your letters from your cardstock, making sure that you keep all of the pieces, including the insides of those letters. You can go ahead and leave your alphabet dies on that piece of mint tape. It's going to come in handy in a little bit because we're going to have to cut out additional cardstock um, to elevate those letters. This is also a really great way to use up old strips of cardstock. So if you have white strips anywhere, go drag them out of the closet and use those strips up now. So I am cutting down my background panel down to three and three quarters by five because I'm going to layer this with a piece of black cardstock that will be one quarter inch larger on all sides. So the black one is going to be five and a quarter by four. At this point, go ahead and glue your background panel onto your black cardstock. I'm using Barely Arts Precision Craft Glue. It's my absolute fave. Now I've already cut out and stacked three additional sets of our letters and I'm going to top them off with the fourth and final layer, which is from our background. Now I've lined up all of my letters along with the middles of each letter in the proper order so that I get it right the first time. I'm going to go ahead and add glue to my cardstock where the B would be in the middle of the card, add my raised B, and then I'm going to go ahead and keeping that in place, use my tool in one from Spellbinders to tap down the center of each of the letters. And I'm going to continue that so that all four letters are back into the card. So the object of an eclipse card is to recreate your background with one element of that background being raised. In this case, it's our letters. Now, if you're struggling to get the inside of the letters back onto your background, use some sort of pokey tool or tweezers to go ahead and press, even a bone folder would work, to press those uh, little bits back into your card. I'm using a Spellbinders tool in one. I liked the, uh, the angled tip, and I'm actually using the back part, not the pokey part, of my tool in one. Now I've added the word happy and you can see that B-Day is very subtle but definitely there. Okay, card number two, we're going to do a reverse eclipse. So our background is going to be raised where our letters are going to be recessed. And as you can see, I used patterned paper. You don't have to go through an elaborate background. Use whatever patterned paper you've got lurking in your craft room. This is an excellent opportunity to make a masculine card. And if you haven't seen my masculine card video, I will link it up above for you. I give you a free PDF on how to create your own formula to create hundreds of masculine cards. Easy peasy. I'm lining the back of my patterned paper cardstock with some foam tape. And I am using my Tim Holtz nonstick nine and a half inch shears. These are fantastic scissors. But as always, I will link everything that I've used and all of my favorites down below in the description box. Remove the backing on your foam tape. Now, if you want to give yourself a little wiggle room, go ahead and add some liquid glue to the back of your foam tape so you can kind of slide your card around to center it onto your layered panel. Now, instead of adding glue to the bottom layer like we did for the first card, we're actually going to put our glue on the back of the letter this time. And this is going to be just like playing that game Operation. You remember with the little man and all the parts? It's identical. Um, you're going to go ahead and put glue on the back, and then you're going to set the letter into the open space. Now, I did find it extremely helpful to use a very fine point tweezer to set those letters into their area and then I push them back with the back of the tweezer. Now 
Now, since my letters are recessed, the inside of my letters need to be popped up. So I am using little foam circles and just adhering them to all of the insides of my B, D, and A. And then I'm gonna slap those babies on and we'll be done with this card. I added the same happy sentiment as I did on the first card and the birthday part is recessed and really cool. Here's a look back at that first card and how that is raised. Subtle, but impressive. Okay. For the third card, I'm gonna kind of show you the end result because everything is the same with one exception. Now there are two ways to get this look. The first way and the way that I used was ultra thick embossing powder. Now, if you're a long time crafter, you may still have some of this in your stash and I encourage you to use what you've got. So dig it out and you're going to heat emboss your letters three times to get that really shiny, thick, crystalline look on your letters. That's gonna give us card number three. There is one other option. If you don't have ultra thick embossing powder, but you have glossy accents, you can use that too. Understand that glossy accents is going to work just as well, but it is going to take a while to dry because you really need a thick coat. And if you watched my video yesterday or Friday, and I mentioned I had something that I was waiting for it to dry, well, it was this. I did it with glossy accents as well, and I had to wait overnight for it to be dry enough to put on my card. But either way, we'll give you the same look. Let's check this card out. Rather than have my letters take a back seat on my card, I went ahead and made them bold with the ultra thick embossing powder. Fourth card is a multi eclipse card where I created a frame from my pattern paper and elevated that as well as elevating and ultra thick embossing my letters for the word joy. I added some die cuts of holly and some pops of color for the berries. There you have it. Four cards, one technique. So versatile. We've got the eclipse card the reverse eclipse card, the bold eclipse card, and the multi eclipse card. Let me know in the comments below which one was your favorite and don't forget to check out other pattern paper resources with this playlist. I'll see you real soon. Thanks for watching.